Hi guys, first of all, welcome to this course, Design Innovation Methods. My name is Jim Steinbuckers. I will be one of your teachers in the teaching team for this course. And I would like to present to you the case book packed with different interesting business cases today. So let's go ahead and see what we have in store. Um, let's talk a little bit about the case buildup. Uh, the case buildup is as follows. First, I will give you a very, very brief overview of what the organization is about. I will talk to you about their business model, how they make money, or what type of business model shift they have made through. I will talk to you about the problem they solve. So what problem did they initially solve when they entered the market? Talk to you a little bit about the USPs of the organization, about their business strategy, about their future plans, and I will also reveal some of the sources that we have used for this research. Let's move on with a business case we probably all know about. It is Nespresso. What else? <laughs> so Nespresso is a coffee brand which is basically known for its high-end appearance and for George Clooney. Um, Nespresso is also probably one of the most researched business cases in history. And I guess why is that? It's probably also because of this book, uh, which is called Business Model Generation. In this book, uh, they reveal and they talk about the business model canvas. Um, and basically one of the first few examples that were listed because of this book was Nespresso. Uh, because definitely some of the patterns that are being discussed in the book and also some of the building blocks can be really easily uh, explained with such a simple experience such as coffee, because we all know coffee. Um, why did Nespresso gain this popularity? Well, they gained it because of a patent, which is now expired, but a patent on a cup, which was completely sealed and filled with coffee. And... Um, Definitely because of this cup, they were able to make an innovation shift, which was really important at that time. Because normally, if you would want to have a single cup of coffee, you would need coffee powder from Nestle and Nespresso. You would need this, this coffee powder that you see um, right now only being used like in campings or in some settings where they don't have um, the ability to make coffee. But definitely this was one innovation shift where they could make high-end coffee uh, with a single cup solution. This was what Nespresso did and this is what they patented. Um, they also made an innovation shift in moving from away from the mass market with this coffee powder into niche households or high-end households and into businesses. They also made a deliberate choice not to sell their cups in retail, not to sell them in a supermarket, but to directly sell them through Nespresso boutiques and our Nespresso club. And with that, they realized not a retail margin, but in fact, a huge margin on their products. One of the uh, business model patterns also described in the book, Business Model Generation, um, and a very well-researched business model pattern is the razor blade model or um, sometimes we call it the bait and hook model. It is where you buy, for instance, a razor blade, um, the handle of it, but you have to buy a lot of these uh, razors all the time because they keep running out. The same goes for a printer, which I have right here. Um, I remember, and that was <laughs> way back, I wouldn't do it again, but definitely uh, there were some instances in which buying a new printer at MediaMarkt was sometimes cheaper then refilling your cartridges. So what I would do, I would buy a printer for 40 euros with some cartridges in them, use it. And then when the cartridges were empty, because I never printed that much, I could almost buy a new printer again because it was so outdated. So definitely um, this model describes a model in which you have a primary use um, of something, which is indeed the Nespresso coffee machine, but you keep buying very expensive uh, things that you cannot reuse, such as an espresso cups or the cup of coffee that you have to put in all the time and that makes the money. So what Nespresso did is they sold the Nespresso coffee machine for quite a small amount at production cost, but then they made huge margin on these coffee cups. So that's what they did very cleverly. With this, Nespresso did not only solve a problem, but they also created a new need. So N Nespresso did not only solve the problem of people being able to drink this high-end coffee cup, to drink this high-end 
espresso or coffee or lungo, how they call it. Uh, but definitely they also created a new need. So people that definitely did not think they need this cup of coffee now needed this cup of coffee because also they exploited marketing in such a fine way. The USPs of the Nespresso model are that they create very long lasting relationships with their customers through the Nespresso club. They also have a lot of data about you through the Nespresso club where they know what type of coffee you prefer. They know what type of coffee you like. Um, you can also get, and this is something that's quite new. You can also get uh, a fee, a service fee at Nespresso, um, which you monthly, uh, which you monthly pay. And then you will get the coffee that you put into the system, but you will get the machine for free. Um, also there's extreme premiumization in the model of Nespresso. They've launched high-end Nespresso boutiques where you basically think like you're walking into a jewelry store. And maybe for us right now, it's quite normal or part of the landscape. But definitely when you take this back a few years ago, this was completely unique to have a coffee shop like this somewhere in the city at a premium location in your city. Um, and also with their commercials, they are quite elevating coffee as itself. Also, you can see... As the population in the world increased, coffee is the second most popular drink after water. And also as Asian uh, culture has embraced more and more coffee, Nespresso has grown exponentially in market size. But also other coffee brands have profited from this growth in, uh, in, cultural, uh, in cultural coffee acceptance. So what I think Nespresso is very famous for is they know how to adapt. So as the VP uh, of marketing said during the pandemic, during the last pandemic, they say, so currently we're working with companies to create programs for delivering coffee to remote employees. So basically all the time they think about new ways. When their patent expired, they came up with a new type of cup. They come up with a new type of service fee. Every time they are adapting to make their business model profitable. And right now they're also adapting in a very different way because they had so much critique about the aluminum cases they use for the Nespresso cups. They are thinking about creating reusable cups, but they're also thinking about the positive cup with their incentive as coffee being a driver for good because coffee is also known as being one of the polluting environmental factors. You need a lot of land. The circumstances under which people work are not that good. So basically Nespresso is also doing a lot of uh, projects on how they can elevate the people, the planet, and then the profit. So basically they're changing their image from a very profitable multinational into also a force of good through coffee, which they bundle in their project called the Positive Cup. Uh, here are some of the sources that I use. And again, you can uh, freely... Uh, go to these sources uh, to, to think about uh, this business case to consider that.